Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, are you growing in the Lord Jesus moment by moment, day by day? Are you a little bit more like Jesus today than you were yesterday? Have you committed to something afresh and new that maybe you had not committed to yesterday? Is there something that you have given up, something that you have sacrificed in your life today that you haven't before? Friends, that's what growing in the Lord Jesus is about. It's not just that we grow in intellect, we grow in obedience. And that brings us to our text this morning. Now, today is August the 25th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, our text is going to be found in Luke chapter 18, and I want to take a portion from verse 8. And Jesus says, when the Son of Man comes for the second time, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith on the earth? That goes against everything that we've been told. I mean, we've been told that there's going to be a great revival across the land, that people are going to come by the masses. And yet that's not what Jesus is saying here. Jesus says, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? Now, there's a couple of different ways we can look at this. We certainly want to look at it in context. So we're going to do that. But first of all, Let's just think about a couple of things. We know in the last days that the persecution of God's people is going to be so severe that many will forsake the Lord Jesus and succumb to this new world government, this new world power that's going to take over. And they're going to do this for many reasons, maybe to escape death, but even to escape starvation and hunger. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been hungry before. I'm not just talking about going a couple of days without food. A week, two weeks without food. I haven't. But I know what a couple of days feels like, and I can only imagine what a week or two would put a person through. The pain that we would endure as our body turns against us. And we're told in the book of Revelation that you will not be able to buy, sell, trade, barter unless you take the mark of this world leader. But we're also told once you take that mark, your soul is eternally damned. So there must be some type of denial to the Lord Jesus, an absolute rejection of what we know to be true in order to reach or meet our creature comforts specifically what we were just talking about, hunger pains, as opposed to dying such a miserable death. And so many will fold under that pressure and become followers of this person that we call the Antichrist, the son of desolation, as the Bible terms him. And yet in our text, again, Luke 18, verse 8, Jesus says, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Could this be a parallel meaning that would imply many, even most, will forsake the cause of Christ because of the torture that they're enduring and succumb to the way of the Antichrist? Well, that could be one way to look at it. James tells us that faith without works is dead. So maybe Jesus is implying here that there are many who are going to claim to know me, who are going to claim to know all about me. But if you look at their lives, it won't resemble that of a true follower of the Lord Jesus. And so what is a true follower of the Lord Jesus? Well, let me put it this way. Jesus preached against money and material possessions and the desire that lies in the heart for these things more than any other subject of his ministry. And so maybe we live out our faith day by day is the sacrifices we make against the things of this world, against money, against material possessions, and 
and, and all the things that those provide to us. I mean, as I've said before, if you can't give up rock and roll, if you can't give up country, if you can't give up sports for Jesus now, how are you going to give up your life for Jesus then? You won't. So we need to be in training, sacrificing as much as we can now so that when the true days of sacrifice come, we will be better prepared for them. Now, that's just two ways to look at this text. But this actually falls on the back of a parable that Jesus has just told. And basically, it's about a woman who lives in a city with a judge that did not fear God, nor did he regard man in any way. And so this widow comes to this judge and asks him to avenge her from her adversary. But the judge won't respond to her. And so she keeps troubling the judge day after day after day so that he will avenge her from this adversary. And in verse 5 of this same chapter, he says, I will not do this because I fear God, nor because I regard man, but only because the widow troubles me and her continually coming to me wearies me. And then Jesus, after telling this parable, says, God, Shall not God avenge his own elect? They cry unto him day and night, but he bears long with them. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily, but they must be patient. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Will he find men and women who are willing to wait on God? Will he find men and women who are willing to depend on God? for all their sources of necessity? Or will he find men and women that are living exactly according to the way of this world? Will they be depending upon their money for satisfaction? Or will they be depending upon God? So there's several ways that we can look at this text, and I would ask you to ponder them yourself throughout the remainder of the day. And maybe you have one that I haven't thought of or I haven't considered. Please leave it in the, in the description box below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Regardless of how we take this text, one theme runs constant through all possibilities. And that's the fact of self-denial to this world and absolute allegiance to God. Sacrifice now so the sacrifice later won't seem to be so great. Does that make sense? Well, I love you, friends. I'm so glad you're again here with us today. I pray that the Word of God is blessing you and challenging you. I pray that it's enriching your walk in the Lord Jesus. And I pray that it's empowering you to go and be the soldier that he has called you to be in his kingdom, in his great army. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.